All right, before I do start this video, I thought I would just uh, share this announcement. Normally, my videos are not sponsored. None of them are sponsored, okay? People give small donations. But this video is sponsored, and it's sponsored by a client of mine who actually was very happy because he got his dream job a few days ago. He has been my client for nearly, I think, one and a half year plus, very senior level uh, executive, and he is one of my premium clients. So he got the job of his dreams. He was very happy, and he decided uh, that this video that I was going to talk about Sheikh Mohammed's book, uh, the, his leadership and his life, he wanted to sponsor this video. So he has requested me not to mention his name, his position, any identity, even the amount. The amount was pretty good. Okay, I'll tell you that much. I'm pretty happy with that. More than many of Okay. So he has requested me not to give his name, but he has asked me to give a small little message. And this message is to not only his children, but all the youngsters who watch YouTube videos. Um, he has asked me to say this is, uh, youngsters, do not waste your time look cherry picking uh, information and videos. Yes, get inspired. Yes, watch them. But there's a line between passion and practicality. So you need to be practical. All these videos about Arnold Schwarzenegger, Oprah Winfrey, Jack Ma, Elon Musk, all that. Sometimes it not it's not realistic. Now, this is what he has asked me to share with you. Uh, end of the day, hard work is what comes down. It comes down to and success is very, very subjective. There is no foolproof um, recipe or book that will guarantee your success and don't measure success in terms of only money uh, there are a lot of other variables so this was the message he asked me to give people watching this video and um, this message he wanted me to give especially his youngster his children and the youngsters who are watching so once again a big thank you to my sponsor who wishes to remain anonymous he's very happy with his dream job he's very happy that what he worked hard for so many years of his life he has managed to achieve through my coaching, which I'm also very happy and I'm super happy that he decided to sponsor. So I thought I would just share this message with you. So now, guys, enjoy the book review that is coming. Sheikh Mohammed's My Story. Hi there, Lloyd Mesita. We need you from LloydMesita.com. Who's Lloyd Mesita and Think Personal Branding? All right. Um, I thought today I would just do a book review of Sheikh Mohammed's uh, latest book that was released on, uh, this is the book. It says 50 years, uh, what's this? 50 memories or 50 years of service. Okay. So this book was released and I'll give you the exact date, uh, January 13th, 2019. It was uh, courtesy Gulf News that said that uh, 50 stories in 50 years, Sheikh Mohammed's latest book and um, his new book, Kisset, My Story, contains powerful insights into his life and mind. So the minute I happened to hear about, okay, he has released a new book, I was like, ah, okay, fine, I need to get this book because if you are a follower of my channel and if you read my articles, you know that I did the review of his previous book, that is My Vision, uh, that is uh, Challenges in the Race for Excellence, and I also put a book review. So um, the book uh, that is Vision, the first one, that is this one, the book that is The Vision, this one I gave it a slightly positive review. I can't recollect what exactly was the score that I gave it, but I gave it a slightly decent score, and I also said that it's a recommended reading. So many people ended up saying, okay, Roy, then... I'll purchase the book. And I also told people why you should purchase the book. What is the reason to purchase the book? And what can you expect from the book? I'll put the links below so you can check uh, the written review as well as the video review. Um, but when this book came out, I had, uh, you know, I had reservations for it. On one hand, I was pretty excited. I was like, okay, fine. A new book is coming by Sheikh Mohammed. Um, so it can be good. But then when I read 50 years or 50 memories of for 50 years of service, um, I was more like, uh, okay, so he's going to share 50 stories. So obviously, the first thing that came to my mind, these were my thoughts. Like, if it has to be 50 stories, now obviously you cannot put 10 pages per story. So then it'll be 500 pages. So it'll be a really big book. Uh, it's like Timothy Ferris or, um, you know, Tribes of Mentors or... Uh, uh, tools of Titans. It'll be a really fat book. Uh, but then I was like, um, I don't think it's going to be 10 pages. Maximum, it'll be 
three to four pages per story or they'll try to condense the story. So I had my reservations and I kind of knew, I kind of knew, I was not too sure, that this book wouldn't be as good as Visions. However, kept an open mind and um, lo and behold, one day I decided, now it's time to read this book and I'm going to read the book. I sat down to take the book to read um, to just let you know, the book even though is roughly how many pages? Uh, I didn't even see. It's around 300 pages, 306 pages. The book by itself, let me show it to you so that you can um, see it for yourself. The book by itself is, you know, the font, if you can see the font, it is not, uh, there's a lot of space, there's a lot of gaps in the font. Like, for example, if you see the picture, the picture takes almost one full page and then the font, there's a lot of gaps. So it's it's not like uh, one of those condensed versions. Um, like, so you can see this, there's one big picture here and then, you know, the font, it's very easy to read. So if you actually where to take this book, like see, for example, here on page 209, uh, this one takes, you know, so much part of the book and the rest is just like three paragraphs. So if this book were to be written like any normal uh, normal novel, like for example, let me show you one. Um, this one is Desmond Morris. This one is by Desmond Morris. In this book, if you actually see the font, you can see the font here. I mean, this book is roughly around um, 165 pages. Okay, 165. So you can see there's no gap, there's no space. It's, it's not easy to read this book. Okay, it's not easy. It's not very easy. This 165 pages versus Sheikh Mohammed's 300 pages. This book, this book would have taken um, at the pace that I read. I think this book would have taken at least eight days, seven to eight days of really focusing it. Let's say speed reading. If I were to do it, maybe three days. Okay, but the you know reading eight hours or six hours. This would take around eight days. Sheikh Mohammed's book, this book, I managed to read the whole book within a gap of two and a half hours. And I didn't even do speed reading. Speed reading is where I just move my fingers, um, get the main points, the essence, or I check the chapter at the end to find the essence of the book, or I see, is this chapter adding any value? And I quickly move through the pages. That is speed reading. So I read Sheikh Mohammed's book at a normal pace, like every line, every word, trying to understand what is he saying, who is he referring to. So still, it took me two and a half hours, let's say roughly three hours. So the first thing which you should know about the book is it's very easy to read, plenty of pictures, plenty, not few, plenty of pictures. He has uh, shared some really nice pictures, like, for example, you'll get even photographs when he was, uh, uh, he was in the army, which uh, clean shaven, nearly clean shaven, which I didn't expect. I'll show you that photograph. You see this? Uh, this is Sheikh Mohammed. If anyone would have showed me this and said, can you guess who this is? I would have no idea who this is because this is Sheikh Mohammed clean shaven. Actually, he looks much better with the beard. And then um, there is another photograph of him when he joined uh, the military in the UK. And uh, this is how he looked. Actually, he looks like uh, one of those South Indian, uh, you know, Mangalorean guys or uh, if you would actually look, you wouldn't say he's an Arab bloke. So uh, the beard actually looks much better on him. So, you know, like uh, when I met a Arab local in uh, a British Airways uh, from London, I thought he was Bangladeshi. <laughs> so, so Arab locals have this tendency. Okay. They, with the beard and with their kandura, they obviously look different. So anyway, um, so now this, uh, the book actually was, it was really good. Um, in the sense that the 50 stories that were there, they were small. They were just two or three pages, maximum maybe four pages, and they were very easy to read. Okay, so 50 stories of 50 years of excellence. Um, some places he has given the partial history of UAE. Some places, and most of the places, I would say he has given personal and private moments about his life. So um, the book was, like I said, short stories, easy to read and plenty of intimate moments. Now, the chapters that I did like, if I were to really think of which were the chapters that I did like, let me just tell you a few chapters, not all. If you want to see in detail, check my link. You'll get all the details. 
uh, chapter 3 was sleeping with scorpions where Sheikh Muhammad was put under a elder named Humaid bin Amhi uh, I will just show you that on chapter 3 okay um, he was put under this guy okay let me just uh, make sure okay Humaid al what's his name uh, one second Humaid al Amhi let me make sure that you can see Humaid al Amhi this is the guy this elderly gentleman so he was put under the caretake of this guy and uh, the, the funny thing is you know Sheikh Muhammad uh, was actually staying in a desert he was staying in a you know that is how uh, Imarati locals so why do we always tease them from camel to Cadillac because uh, the actual Emiratis, the pure Emiratis, the real Emiratis used to stay in the desert. They didn't have these expensive Lamborghinis and Ferraris and uh, taking bank loan and buying cars they can't afford, four-wheel drives. No, they were actually very simple people. So uh, Sheikh Mohammed used to stay in the desert. Um, he knew how to hunt and uh, he knew how to... Even uh, chapter 4, if you actually look uh, where his father, Sheikh Rashid, thought this eight-year-old Sheikh Mohammed, how to load a gun, clean a gun, unload a gun, and use a gun. Imagine, at the age of eight. So Sheikh Mohammed was really one of those rugged, rough um, uh, young chaps who was thought survival of the fittest. So in chapter three, uh, in order for Sheikh Mohammed to develop the immunity against scorpion venom, uh, this guy, Humaid bin Amhi, he used to actually put scorpions under the bed of Sheikh Mohammed, under where he's sleeping. So he would get bitten every night and he would cry, get up and you know, get, and then they would put hot coals or rash so that it would heal. Now the reason for this is so that his body developed the immunity and um, later on, you know, he became so resistant that if a scorpion would bite him, nothing would happen. So I found that like, wow, that is really some psycho shit, you know, I, I mean, that's really great. Then you have uh, plenty of other chapters like this is Sheikh Rashid. Sheikh Rashid, one of the most respected um, uh, UAE rulers. So this was Sheikh Rashid and, uh, you know, nice photographs. I really like the photographs. It, really intimate. I mean, this is the father and son um, being together. So, the, the, you know, uh, the, the, these were really, it was very generous of Sheikh Mohammed to share this. In fact, one of the other favorite chapters, so chapter three was one of my favorites. The other favorite chapter of mine was chapter 19. Uh, let me just go to that. Chapter 19 is when he goes to Cambridge. Now, uh, the reason uh, Sheikh Rashid sent Sheikh Mohammed to Cambridge was to learn English. Okay, so where else can you learn English the best? Okay, so when he was young, without a mustache, this is how Sheikh Mohammed looked without clean shape. You know, it doesn't look very nice. He looks like a cute little boy. Okay, so he was sent to... Uh, London, Cambridge, and uh, the person's house was Mrs. Summers. So this is Mrs. Summers' house. He was sent here, and here he learned <laughs> some. Uh, you know, it, it's like Arabic culture. They tend to put food right in the center. You have a big cooked uh, goat, or you have a camel right in the center with rice and eggs and nuts, and people put their hand and they take and they share with one another. But here, when he moved to a British culture, they had to sit with forks and knives. They had to sit and say grace before meals. Obviously, he being a Muslim, they didn't force him to say grace before meals. But he was a really good guest. And um, you eat only how much you want. And then you keep the rest of the food in the fridge, which Arab locals don't do. And then after you finish, you pick up your plate and you go and you make sure that <laughs> you wash your plate. So Sheikh Mahmoud is not familiar with all this and he has really been humble and honest enough to share all this and it was really nice so I liked I liked um, this part of the chapter as well and um, you know um, this is another chapter which I really like I I, I think you I should share this this one is the Arabic pipe okay the Arabic pipe um, and it is it is a very powerful analogy I really liked the analogy of this um, chapter whereby when um, uh, UAE was trying to get independence from uh, Britain and you had this guy British Prime Minister Harold Wilson okay British Prime Minister Harold Wilson here it's a photograph of them together so when they wanted um, the freedom uh, there was this part where they were both smoking the pipe so the British Prime Minister was smoking his pipe while Sheikh Rashid took out his pipe to smoke so 
one there was this particular line in this book i'll read it out to you whereby um, the british you know because british nationals they tend to be rather sarcastic really sarcastic they love to crack jokes and they sometimes crack crude jokes so in that he, uh, he uh, you know the british prime minister told sheikh rashid obviously they must have been close so he said as you're smoking look my pipe is bigger than yours uh, you can actually even relate it sexually like you know my pipe is bigger than yours so although i'm you know i would say that he said it but not in a crude way but because he was friends so sheikh rashid with his wisdom and his wit that he had so he smiled looked at sheikh mohammed and then he looked at uh, wilson and said tell wilson i agree with him that his pipe is bigger than mine i agree with him but even though my pipe is small the tobacco i use in it is very strong and powerful absolutely brilliant i really loved it i mean uh, you know these are moments that you really look forward to reading and uh, understanding and um, and the book really shared these bits uh, there was also a part where uh, i'll tell you which chapter uh, he speaks about uh, in chapter 37 where he brings about emirates airlines um, this was um, a nice photograph that you know i think is pretty hard to get so this was another one so uh, really nice ones and then obviously the the departure of uh, um, the departure of Sheikh Zayed. And, um, here, by the way, is a good photograph of uh, Sheikh Maktoum, Sheikh Ahmed, and uh, Morris Flangen. Flanagan. Flanagan. I hope I got that name right. So these three. So really nice book. And in the end, he you know addresses the future of Dubai. Okay. So uh, sorry. In the last chapter, chapter fifty, he gives ten rules of leadership. The ten rules of leadership being: serve the people, don't worship the position, set your plan, monitor yourself, build a team. Innovate and leave, communicate, be optimistic, uh, compete, create leaders, go forth and live a meaningful life. Okay, so these were the chapters which were really good. Um, I think one of the, the surprising bits or the nuggets were chapter 39 on Beirut, chapter 40 where they invade um, Kuwait, uh, sorry, Iraq invades Kuwait, chapter 41 where Sheikh Zayed, Sheikh Mohammed and Saddam Hussein actually made up um uh, chapter 42 which i was surprised was bashar al-assad of syria where was actually close friends with sheikh mohammed and uh, chapter 44 that is uh momar gaddafi's relationship with sheikh mohammed he really wanted to make a positive impact in africa but you know gaddafi was a jackass anyway he didn't say that but that's what it is so the, these were the parts that I liked about the book. However, there are plenty of drawbacks in the book. Um, some of the drawbacks being uh, the main one, the main drawback being is, you know, when he came out with the book, The Vision, he bought out the best stories of his life. And he shared. Um, so when he decided to come out with another book with his stories, once again, so obviously you've given the best. So, you know, it would be a little hard for him to pick up new stories. Although in this book, there are those stories like when they uh, hijack the Japanese airlines. I'll give the exact um, 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 chapter. That is Flight Ordeal 404, Chapter 30, J uh, Japanese Airlines Flight 404 being hijacked and how Sheikh Mohammed uh, went with the negotiations. Then um, uh, Chapter 32, uh, the hijacked. Lufthansa Boeing 737 carrying 91 people. So these were the bits that were shared and also his relationship with other countries. So these are the rare ones. However, the other chapters I felt were just fillers. For example, I'll, I'll give you a specific. Chapter 5 speaks about chapter 5, chapter 6 and chapter 7 speak about Sheikh Mohammed's mother, Latifa. Chapter 5 says my first love, that is his mother. Chapter 6 says Latifa, once again, the gift of life. And he speaks about what his mother taught him. And chapter 7 is Farewell to Latifa, Her Death. I felt 5, 6, 7 could have been one chapter. Then you have the same thing with uh, chapter 11 and 12, which speaks about Sheikh Rashid uh, bin Said, his father. Chapter 28 and 29, which speaks about independence and the unification of a sim uh, single army, which I felt could have been the same. However, the biggest drawback in the book, the biggest, was chapter 14, 15, 46 and 47 uh, and mind you these were the biggest chapters 
Chapter 14 is about his horse. Chapter 15, which was eight pages. Chapter 15 is my first race, which is again about a horse. Same horse, uh, eight pages. Chapter 46 is the finest horse in the world, Dubai Millennium, which is seven pages. And chapter 47 is a, once again about Dubai Millennium, which is the largest chapter in the book. 13 pages is about Dubai Millennium. So you have 8 plus 8, 16 plus 7, uh, 16 plus 7, uh, 12, 23, 23 plus 13, 6, 36. I hope I got that right. Don't mind. My maths is pretty bad. So 36 pages dedicated to only horse. Okay. And his love for horse. So maybe because I'm not a horse guy or I don't like horses or I think horse is a horse. I just, what is, you know, I, I kept asking myself, what has this got to do with leadership? What has this got to do with the future of the nation? What has this got to do with contributing to the, you know, the vision of UAE? Now, in his previous book, My Vision, he speaks about the relationship of an Arab with his horse, which I totally understand. Um, Arabs identify, especially like Sheikh Mohammed said, that an Arab Emirati identifies himself with his steed. Uh, it's like his respect is his horse. I understand that. But then having these... So many chapters related to a horse and winning the horse didn't make any sense. In fact, my thoughts went about uh, how Sheikh Mohammed had to shut down all the stables because of the steroid abuse scandal that um, were, they discovered steroids. Uh, all his horses were using steroids and in 24 hours, he shut them down. You can just Google search this. So I just felt that, okay, the horses chapter were a total waste. And then you have these chapters, which I felt were a total waste of space. Space in the sense, he didn't write anything worthwhile. Like chapter one, from where we started to where we are today, the whole essence of the chapter is we started off as simple people. Today, we're going to send one person to Mars, which is not yet sent, but we are going to send. This chapter could have been summarized in a few lines. He didn't have to make a chapter for it. Then he speaks in chapter 18 about Maktoum, his brother, which, you know, he identified him as a caring, loving, sweet person, but None of his economic policies, none of his leadership, uh, you know, words of wisdom, nothing was mentioned there. So I really wondered what is the point. Chapter 13 was an absolute fiasco. It's about his little cave, how he has a small little room where he keeps, where he just bought all animals that they have snakes, scorpions, you know, all these animals in the room. It didn't make any sense. Why did he have that chapter? And chapter 23, help from God. It's not because I'm an atheist, but it was just a mishmash of he believed in God. And he went to Mecca for his pilgrimage. So these four chapters, I didn't feel added any value at all. But like I said, um, me being a fan of Sheikh Mohammed, there were plenty of other chapters that I did read. I have mentioned in the article, which are the worthwhile ones, which are the ones which are totally amazing. Last, if not the least, if I were to give the moment, the conclusion, okay, the conclusion, the final I would say that this is a book that was brought out as a souvenir because Sheikh Mohammed was celebrating 50 years of leadership, which is really mind boggling, which is amazing. I mean, just think you are in a position of leadership for 50 years of your life. You, I, I can't even wrap my head around it. He, Sheikh Mohammed started his journey into this leadership at the age of 19, which is, which is just unbelievable. Okay. And he has really dedicated his life to Dubai. Whatever Dubai is, we've got to shake bomb. So hats off. So that is amazing. But then coming out with a book, trying to commemorate that is hard enough. But then you're trying to match 50 years with 50 incidents. And that also the 50 incidents which involve you. It It's not easy. Like if I were to ask you, can you think of 50 moments of your life, special moments of your life. I'm pretty sure you'll come out with 10. Maybe you max will come out with 25 or 20. But then beyond that, you'll be struggling. You'll be like, okay, what do I mention? What do I say? So you, it, it just dilutes itself. And Sheikh Mohammed has gone one step far ahead. He came out with his book, My Vision, where he gave the best stories over there. And now he has come out with the second book, which has to not only take, and that is why you'll find many stories interlapping between my vision and this one. So that was the biggest challenge. However, if you were to ignore 
the overlapping of the stories okay having chapters for the sake of having chapters the one biggest um criticism that this book would get is the book only praises dubai the book only applauds dubai the book only uh talks over the good stuff of dubai sheikh mohammed being a leader has not mentioned one single mistake one single error one single fault or flaw at all about dubai about uae about himself i mean i was looking forward for where sheikh mohammed would say yes i have made mistakes and after stating that what were the mistakes i was looking forward to you he, he could have mentioned the palm island well he didn't maybe because he's afraid of investment problems the dredging the challenges that they're facing with the palm maktoum they expected you know 800 million or 200 million passengers it's not happening only 20 million and it's declining they he didn't mention at all about the 20 billion dollars that they have to pay abu dhabi uh, or the world uh, he didn't mention a single failure in fact one of the statements that he has put there is about uae not being afraid of challenges it is looking forward for challenges with competition if that is the case out of great humility i want to ask put forward this question not just to sheikh mohammed but to uae if you are not afraid of competition why is a local arab emirati salary four times five times 10 times more same position same responsibility same everything to an asian why why the gap is it racism if it's not racism then why the special preferential treatment why because they are uae locals yes i understand that you want to support them you want their support so you're paying them extra why are you giving them such a big discrepancy is that how you make them competitive by giving them 10 times more if i wanted to make someone really competitive i would make the playing field i would level the playing field pay the same salary local with arab with british with everyone you compete let your let your output let your results do the talking like a salesman you uh bring more sales i'll pay you more money so that is the first challenge that i give if you say that uae is competitive why the difference in salary that's the first one which i can challenge you no arab emirati local or no uae anybody from uae can give me the answer because checkmate they know they are at fault that's number one number two is if you are looking for global competition here's my question to you it is allowed and do it is allowed and do which are monopolies they block skype they block whatsapp they block facebook they block video chatting they block uh uh free internet calls and they have made it a monopoly where you have to subscribe to them you have to take what they are sharing their plan and they charge sky high in fact it is considered as for some charts it is the most expensive internet uh connection or the amount people pay in the world so how can you say that you're competitive you're competitive with who with what by making us and you keep bragging oh uae got a billion dollar profit it is yeah because you're a fucking monopoly and last if not the least you're talking of competition give me the name of one emirati ceo any emirati leader who is sought after in any multinational company outside uae give show me how many countries united states new zealand australia france india is actually looking to employ emiratis uae is employing indians uae is employing pakistanis uae is employing africans uae is employing filipinos which country is employing emiratis you know the reason they're not employing them is because they are like fattened with juicy big salaries in uae they can only work or it's not just uae Saudis and Qataris and Kuwaitis they can only work in their country they can't work anywhere else they are unemployable nobody wants to employ them because they deserve they feel they deserve the sun moon and stars that's why these countries these middle east will remain like the small piddly little countries that they are nobody wants to employ them because they have to pray five times they have to go for their break uh, come to office late go home early 
and they are their egos up they are bloody i don't know where and these are facts you can correct me if i'm wrong and last if not the least the biggest criticism of the book the biggest shikh mohammed has mentioned we started this project that project he keeps you know dubai or uae especially shikh mohammed started this trend where they would announce big projects every single time which is which is great because that is what gives amazing publicity like uh, um uh, you know right now in the newspaper is airport uh, is sorry is flying taxis then the mission to mars so they are always like even world trade center was the first largest biggest tallest building in the world until united states came out with you know those two towers so uae has been really trying to stand up like even the palm island it's an incredible structure whatever said and done even though it's a failure it's an incredible structure but then uae is very good at announcing projects at trying to be the first to announce but if you actually compare number of projects announced and number of projects completed and successfully delivered one is completed one is delivered and maintained there is a massive discrepancy now you are announcing about we'll send the first man first arab to the moon first arab to the mars great announcements what about the existing incomplete projects like you are supposed to pay 20 billion to the world of abu dhabi there's no news about that uh you know all this uh you know the world on the water the world those islands it was announced never completed palm island 1 2 3 was announced only one is completed waterfront and uh, you know all those gimmicks that they are going to build a city in water underwater hotel and this and that all these were great announcements like a a tower that will rotate individually will rotate then even um, expo 2020 tower there was this tower that was announced and now it's vanished now they are coming out with this new tower which has a fingerprint of sheikh mohammed all these are great announcements like even in the book there is the uh, al maktoum airport which is supposed to be the largest it's a fiasco it's empty it's hardly being used now only it's being used right now as we speak this current day if you're actually looking april 19th 2000 what is it uh, 19 it's being used because the runway is closed that's the only reason it's being used if once the main airport is being opened officially again al maktoum airport will be bloody empty nobody is using it so what i'm trying to say is not just criticize but give you a realistic picture so i wish i really wish sheikh mohammed would take that step forward and share some failures i'm not talking of all the failures some failures that would have made me respect him a hundred times more i i love the man i admire him i think he's a great human being great leader forget all the scandals that are there about his daughter that's none of your fucking business about his family his son it's nobody's fucking business it's his family life okay just as you don't want the whole world looking into your personal private matters and judging you how you look after your child and all that so it's nobody's business what he does personally with his family it's nobody's business however what you're talking about in terms of public work leadership it's okay to show that you're human it's okay to say i have failed i did this we tried it didn't work out like apple has failed come out with failed products google has come out with failed products samsung now the foldable phone is it's having problem so when you admit to failure people respect you much more not a single project not a single incident nothing of failure was mentioned in the book which made me look at this book as nothing but another marketing brochure that hypes up dubai and you know sheikh mohammed obviously himself and you so that made me it's like look at it as a one dimensional book and that's about it and that is why when i evaluated everything else i i just asked myself okay so what would i rate this book i even though i'm a big fan of sheikh mohammed even though there were let's say 20 chapters which are really worth it or let's say 10 chapters which i really loved still i i was disappointed with the book 
and I would give the book a 4 out of 10. Okay, a 4 out of 10, which is very disappointing. However, there's one last thing which I do want to share with you and that is this. You know, I when I read a book, especially carefully for a review, I, I always, uh, let me show you so you can see, I always underline it with yellow. Now, if you actually look at it closely, you can see the yellow here that marking is gone. The reason being is after I highlighted with yellow, when I close the book, this part of the ink stuck on the photograph, this part of the page, it stuck over there and this, you know, made it hard. It stuck and hard for it to open and when I tried to open it, almost tore off. So it's pretty disappointed with the quality. They tried to make it very glossy. It's a heavy book. It's really a heavy book. Uh, I paid around, I think, close to $100 just uh, for the shipping. The, the book was given as a gift, but $100 because it's so heavy. So I would say that... Um, not hundred dollars, eighty dollars, I think. Yeah, eighty somewhere. So I would say that the book, even though it gives good insights and everything else, it's still a disappointment. Even though I'm a big fan of Sheikh Mohammed, the previous book that was Visions, I gave it like a seven or eight. I don't know exactly how much I gave, it, but I gave it much more. Uh, let me just check it out right now so I can give you the exact score that I gave. If you just Google Floyd Masiro Sheikh Mohammed. The Vision, Vision Book Review. Just going there. I gave the book a very detailed review, very, very detailed. It's You can just keep scrolling down, 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 down. Um, it's a very long review. I gave a 6.5 out of 10. Yes, 6.5 or 7. So even though I gave 6.5 out of 10 or 7, this book, uh, I gave it sadly a 4 out of 10. So very disappointed. So 4 out of 10 means if you don't buy it, you're not losing anything. It's not worth buying. So this is my book review for Sheikh Mohammed's, um, Sheikh Mohammed's, that is my story. So just as you know, it's very hard to get one hit, which is a massive hit and next one to come out with a better hit. Well, this book, the first one, that is this book, this one was 6.5 or 7. Okay. Uh, this one is four. disappointing. So if you don't buy it, you're not going to miss anything. Um, if you want to know what the book is about, I've given the entire book review. So check it out. Let me know what you think. So this is the book review. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't like it, thumbs down. And this is me signing off for now, guys. If there's, by the way, if there's any book review that you do want me to give you, put down in the comment section below. And once again, thank you very much to the main sponsor of this video, who is this big guy whom I helped manage to get a job and he paid some amount of money he just told me to say hello to his family so thank you once again family people you know who's your dad and you know the video study hard don't waste time you know this is me always telling you what your father always said he's a great guy so thank you very much to the sponsor of the video and to that finance controller who sent me this book as a gift i appreciate this is me signing off for now take care